Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator news and updates. And today we got a few pieces of information I think you guys will all enjoy. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Okay, first up on the list, little news from me. The Overkill 787 tutorial guide for Microsoft Flight Simulator has finally been released and available to Patreon subscribers levels tier two and above. It is a full flight tutorial um, full with pictures of absolutely every single step. If I made any kind of change to the aircraft, it is in this guide. Charts are all there. Um, and guys, by the way, feel free to always hit me up if you do already own some of my guides and you would like to see some changes or some edits. Please, please, please feel free to reach out. I absolutely welcome that kind of criticism. Um, it may always not always happen immediately, but I do try my best to get all the changes in. But these are uh, full tutorial guides from startup uh, cold, and, cold and dark startup at the uh, departure to the cold and dark shutdown at the destination. Has again, absolutely everything that you guys would need to complete the flight within the guide and hopefully get you up flying a new aircraft that maybe you've been wanting to fly. Check out this and all of the rest of my guides again over at the Patreon site. Next up on the list, Flight Sim Studio and Aerosoft have re released their C-Ray Elite aircraft for Microsoft Flight Simulator. The C-Ray is a high-wing um, amphibious aircraft. So um, again, back to another seaplane essentially is what, what you got going on, but you have a little bit of both. It can do either or, which is always very, very nice. Um, it has a ton of different features in it, including uh, custom-made sounds that are realistic to the real aircraft, full 4K textures inside and outside, and an EFB tab. The EFB does contain real-time uh, weights and balances management, as well as simulated worker or walk around, excuse me, that actually gives you the ability to uh, be a part of some am animation uh, for the walk-around checklist. Gosh, I am sorry, guys. I cannot talk today. Um, and now it does support all of the things that Microsoft Flight Simulator supports by default. Windshield, rain effect, the high resolution PBR textures, textures as before mentioned, visual icing effects, and an interactive checklist. Now the interactive checklist is a big one to me, especially with new aircraft. It is actually sort of, I will say, surprising how often it is not used by developers. Um, it is a very, very quick and easy way to get uh, your, your end users to... Uh, engage in new aircraft and it is very very common that I actually don't see them now usually that's replaced by physical documentation such as PDFs so things like that aren't a big deal but I really do like seeing that the interactive checklist is being used <clears throat> because if for no other reason it gets you um, around the cockpit it starts you know where's the battery switch where's this switch where's that switch you know and that's a really big part again is just cockpit discovery sometimes the interactive checklist can make all the difference um, has a couple of different avionics systems, so make sure you guys check this one out. Um, pretty awesome stuff. Again, you can have it for 1508 euros, um, and I believe this is available from Aerosoft's site. Next up, we have an update from none other than PMDG themselves. Um, we have, first off, some information about the current 737 releases. There is a patch that's going to be coming out here relatively soon that will address a few issues as well as fix a handful of bugs, quote unquote, to the FSLE document. Unfortunately, we still are not going to see that uh, tablet that we've all been waiting for. It just sounds like the team is still just not happy with the performance of it. And so, um, by all means, I totally get it. I, I'm waiting for the tablet as well, just like everybody else. But again, I would much rather them uh, iron everything out before they just jump right into it and throw us something because we all keep complaining. Um, but obviously, just like many of the other tablets, we do know it's going to be able to control various aircraft features and configurations, as well as most of the ground service operation. So it will be handy to have once it's available. And knowing PMDG, I'm sure that charts and, uh, you know, real world tracking will be available as well. Uh, the 737-900 series, uh, we should be expecting to see that sometime in November. So right around the corner, um, the, are they have been very transparent in the fact there are still quite a few issues with the 900 series that they are trying to resolve. Um, uh, but it looks like again, November or mid November is still the current target. Um, Microsoft users, uh, the goal is still to get the, or Microsoft users, Xbox users, 
The goal is still to get the PMDG uh, line over to the Xbox uh, product. However, at the time, it sounds like they're still playing, they're still dealing with some waiting on coding. Specifically, they mentioned the C++ and WASM uh, issues to be released uh, before they can bring the any of the aircraft, starting with the DC-6, to the Xbox systems. So hang tight, guys. It sounds like they're still working on it. It is nice to see that you guys are going to get the PMDG series lineup eventually. Um, and trust me, with the um, complexity of the PMDG aircraft, you definitely want to make sure that they have everything ironed out before you try that on the console. Um, attention is now moving to the triple seven. It sounds like great progress has been made on the cockpit and hopefully in the near future, we'll start seeing some images of it. Super, super stoked for the triple seven. I have loved the triple seven since I first saw it. I remember when it first released, they did a big flyover Tucson. You got to see it bank. You still had the Boeing emblem or uh, the Boeing uh, lettering down the side, all that good jazz. Uh, so I got to see one of the first ones fly. It was pretty cool. Um, and especially after that horrible release of the triple seven that we know exists somewhere else that I'm not going to mention any names because I won't give any credit to it. Um, it's really nice to see that PMDG of all people is taking over the triple seven and bringing it to Microsoft flight simulator. Um, I'm really excited for this one. They have also stated it's going to be a middle aged triple seven, meaning that we should see some wear and tear inside the cockpit and then the overall uh, structure or uh, what's the word I'm looking for texturing of the aircraft. Um, obviously PMDG has a lot on their plate, so I'm going to continue to monitor this pretty closely. And as soon as we start getting information about releases coming down, obviously guys, I will be letting you know, but it is really nice to hear that all of the features, it sounds like they're doing quite a lot at once. Um, so, uh, we should see some pretty rapid development within the next year. I'm really excited to see what starts coming down the line from them. Orbix has released the PAC P750 X stall aircraft from Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, this is another one of those ones I think I'm going to check out here on the channel. Uh, this is an aircraft that definitely grabbed my attention. 3837 Australian through Orbix, guys, so it's a little bit higher on the price point. Um, but if you take a look at the features, it seems to match everything that we need for it. Now, what I really like is, again, it sort of brings that same class not the same style, but same class of aircraft that I expect to see from like a TBM 930. Um, we did get the PC-12 not too long ago, um, but I will say that honestly, at the end of the day, I was more impressed still with my TBM. Uh, so I'm sort of really looking for a new turboprop aircraft. Um, again, same kind of range, same kind of overall body style, although really, really goofy looking in my opinion. And at the same token, super appealing because it's goofy looking. Uh, it's definitely an aircraft I want to check out. I'm super uh, excited to try this one. Um, I am purchasing it this evening. So guys, you guys will see this aircraft definitely come up on the channel. If you want to wait uh, for my review of the aircraft or first impressions, I want to be careful using that word review because I am not obviously a uh, P750 pilot. So um, I feel it's unfair to say that kind of stuff. Um, but anyway, first impressions, if you guys catch it, make sure you guys check out all the features that are listed below for this particular aircraft. Again, 3837 Australian dollars um, found on the Orbix Direct website. Next up, the High Performance Group once again kicked some tail, turned some names with their hot air balloon simulation. I actually have a, or a first impressions video on my channel uh, if you guys want to go back a couple of days and check this one out, I'll try to remember to put a link to it in the description or at least put a card up maybe at this point here. Um, so take a look at the screen. Hopefully there's a card popping up showing you guys where this video was. This was actually a ton of fun to fly and it was far more. Um, it was one of those ones that sort of caught me by surprise. Um, I, I, I had no idea what to expect. Um, you know, when I think flight simulators never once did hot air balloons come to my mind and uh, height performance was kind enough to give me a uh, review copy, if you will. And, uh, from the first moment that I started checking out, I'm like, all right, this, this isn't too bad. It's kind of neat. Managing the speed, managing, or not the speed, excuse me, more managing the altitude is quite the challenge in paying attention to wind, wind edge direction. Gosh, I cannot talk today. Um, and then uh, making sure that you plot that descent real, descent real quick. Um, and as well as uh, making sure to manage that descent very carefully as I found out very uh, rapidly on my own in that review video of the things that can go bad if you don't pay attention to the envelope. Um, 15 US dollars, guys, I can promise, especially if you are a VR user, I wanna make that very clear. Uh, to VR users, it was not only optimized for you, but designed around it. So uh, that is a very big kicker. It's got the uh, same EFB that you can find in the H145 and 135s. Um, 
all the same features that are available in it, as well as you guys also have the ability with this hot air balloon to pick up some fireworks and fire some fireworks off. You can also add a bunch of uh, hot air balloons around you if you want to create like a hot air balloon event for your for your particular simulation that day. Um, 15 US dollars. I, I, if you've ever even been remotely interested in what it would be like to travel in a hot air balloon, give it a shot. I promise you won't be disappointed. It is really like I said, guys, it blew me away. I was I was not expecting what I wound up feeling after doing a simulation in a hot air balloon. I did try it a couple days later in a virtual reality, and uh, I'm going to give you guys a little tip. If you do this in virtual reality, get yourself a wireless mouse or use your VR controllers and stand up when you do it. Okay, that's, that's my little tip to you guys. If you're going to do it in VR, stand up while you're doing it. Use your VR controllers, your hand controllers to control the different functionality of the uh, hot air balloon and uh there's a couple times it'll get you i promise it's uh, <laughs> it's different there's a couple times i found myself doing the oh <laughs> so make sure you guys give that one a shot big shout out to the hype performance group once again for uh breaking the mold and doing something different thinking outside the box some news about the aerosoft a330 the uh, electronic flight bag has uh looks like it's gone some through some significant development uh, if you guys take a look at some of the highlighted features here, consolidated U EFB user interface, meaning that everything's going to be on a very simple screen, easy to navigate around. The simple customization option of a wallpaper is actually being added to this particular uh, EFB, which at first I sort of thought, why? And then I thought, all right, you know what, though? If you want to make the cockpit more your home, I could see where that would actually be kind of cool as the more I thought about it. Um, again, all of your aircraft uh, settings, sim brief integration, your weights and balances, chart integration. This one was a nice one. You can use either Nav Data Pro or Navigraph Charts as your as your chart source. So again, that's the first one that I've seen that has the dual capability of either or. I've seen Navigraph Charts all over the place, and that would make sense given the sim brief integration integration as uh, Navigraph now on sim brief. Um, and then ground handling and pushback, all those things now standing right out uh, in the EFB and easily accessible. Um, make sure you guys check out this link down in the description. Come to this page. Check out the YouTube video that they have on it. It was actually quite impressive um, and very, very nicely laid out. Um, I would say it's, it, for me, I found it to be very comparable to fly-by-wires. Um, it was a very nice, seems to be very well thought out, very well planned out EFB um, for easy navigation and use. Um, no more fiddling with a whole bunch of other different menus to uh, deal with everything that you need to take care of with the aircraft. And again, with the capabilities of a lot of these EFBs and the, and the way they integrate with the simulator, I feel like that's a really big kicker to have. And so I'm kind of, I'm kind of happy that they did this with their preview that they actually previewed specifically the EFB. I think it goes a long way. But guys, that is all I have for you on this wonderful uh, Monday evening. I hope you guys all are having a wonderful week. I hope the week started out well for everybody. As always, stay safe and healthy, guys. Be on the lookout for some uh, new aircraft uh, flight videos coming out from me this week, as well as we're going to start doing a little bit of a blog, guys. I am designing my own uh, homemade cockpit. Uh, it's sort of going to be a very generalized cockpit, something that's suited for both general aviation and combat, as I also do DCS World. And then I'm trying to do sort of an integration between uh, both uh, helicopter flight and fixed wings. So should be pretty cool. Um, I hope that you guys enjoy that series, too. It'll be interesting. You guys will get to see all the dumb mistakes I make while doing that one, too. So, but you know me. I don't leave the mistakes out. As always, guys, stay safe and healthy, and I will see you in the next one.